The most important cell for longevity is not even a cell at all. The most important thing for lifespan is something that's been right in front of our nose all along. But this video is going to be fairly comprehensive. The world of life extension of aging is insanely complicated and nobody knows the answers. I'm going to give you an example. We used to think that oxidative stress was the pinnacle when it came down to aging. That if we could just reduce oxidative stress, we would solve the issues. Because oxidative stress led to damage, the damage led to decline, the decline led to more dysfunction. We've got it solved. Except then we did research and we found, well shoot, when we actually added antioxidants in, it decreased lifespan. Does that mean antioxidants are bad? No, it just means holistically, it's not solving the issue, it's solving one isolated thing. Same kind of thing with senescent cells, right? Senescent cells are those zombie cells. Why would you want zombie cells? They're, they're basically carbon copies of your cells that go out and, and do rogue things and they cause problems. Well, now we find out that senescent cells are required for tissue repair, for healing. So does that mean that senolytics and that whole category of longevity compounds is invalid? No, it's one of the most comprehensive areas of research and it's fascinating. But again, it's a sliver of this giant pie, right? So basically what I say now is we've been able to take different puzzle pieces and we've been able to put them together to form a puzzle. But unfortunately we found that we've only created one corner of the puzzle. We still have a big chunk of the puzzle to figure out but we're starting to put the pieces together and we are starting to understand that a lot of it leads back to the mitochondria. All the aging roads lead to the mitochondria. And I'm gonna explain how in a very comprehensive fashion. So although this video is complex, I will make it distilled and you will have takeaways because by the end of this video, I'm gonna teach you how to make your mitochondria more resilient. Let's dive in more. I'm going to give you an example of how this all plays together with the mitochondria. For example, there's a study published in Free Radical Biology Medicine. And what it was ultimately looking at is that more endogenous, naturally produced antioxidants led to a shorter life. I mean, that seems really backwards. Like we want our body to produce antioxidants, right? Well, what they found is that when the body was producing too much in the way of antioxidants, it inhibited, stopped the signaling from oxidative stress in the first place to make us stronger. So it's almost a deep down inherently wrong thing that our body tries to always stop free radicals because free radicals also send signals to set up the armament. It's like you're missing the phone call to put on your body armor before going to war. And consequently, this impacts what? The mitochondria. Because then the mitochondria are the ones that take the hit they become weaker out of this. And then the prevalence of them getting attacked and damaged is so much higher. Let's dive in more because there's three categories of hallmarks of aging. Three categories that are really important. And this isn't me talking, this is scientific literature here. Okay, there's the primary category, which is things that cause the issues, okay, when we look at aging. Then there is the antagonist side, that is the response to the issue. And then there's the integrated side where it actually causes longer term damage. So the primary category are things like genomic instability, like the actual mutations that are causing problems. Okay, in addition to that, telomere length. Like telomeres, we know those are associated with aging. Those are a big primary category. Epigenetics are genes at an epigenetic level. Big giant categories that we can only pull some levers in, but we know they're big categories. Then we have the antagonistic categories. This is the response to the damage. In response to the damage, you have nutrient sensing issues. You have senescence. You have mitochondrial damage, right? So these are in response to the telomere shortening, et cetera, et cetera. Then you have the integrative side, when everything takes an effect, right? Dysbiosis, chronic inflammation, so I know it sounds complex, like what am I trying to put together with this? What I am suggesting here is that like everything has a cause and effect, but one thing that we do notice is that it all comes right square back to the mitochondria once again. Let's look at genomic instability for just a second because this is an area, sort of a hallmark category of aging that a lot of people know about. Like our, as we get older, our DNA mutates and we have, or genes, everything mutates and we have DNA damage that occurs. And this is how 
tumors can form, how all kinds of issues and mutations happen. On average, we have about 10,000 mutations that are happening daily. So it's happening a lot, okay? When these mutations happen, there is DNA damage. When DNA damage occurs, there is something called PARP1 that comes to the rescue and deals with the DNA damage. But this takes energy. It takes NAD. And if you know about NAD, nicotinamide adenide dinucleotide, this is imperative for cellular energy. Without NAD, we'd be dead in 15 seconds. So it's precious, very important. But when we deplete NAD, we age. It depletes more with aging, but the more that it depletes, the more we age. So when we have to take NAD away from simple energy functions to keep us moving because we need it for repair, it's like you have five employees, but unfortunately two of them now have to go change a tire on your car, so you only have three. That's exactly what's happening without the tires. There was a study that was published in the journal Cell Metabolism that found that when you inhibit PARP1 from repairing DNA, mitochondrial function is better. So if you stopped those two employees from changing the tire, you'd have more energy. Granted, you still need to change the tire, but you'd have more energy. This leads to the cycle of damaged mitochondria. The thing that we have to remember is even according to the Journal of Neurochemistry, mitochondria are 10 times more likely to go through mutation than anything else in the body because they are so close to the source of reactive oxygen species and stress. They are the, the motor. They are so close to all the, all the pollution that comes with it. So what happens is they are the ones that take the hit when NAD is not there to keep that mitochondria acting clean and clear. They take the hit. It's like your kids take the hit of when you have marital issues, right? It's like your kids take the hit when you slack off at work and don't bring home the bacon. You take a hit, but your kids really take the hit. The mitochondria is taking the hit here. How do we strengthen the mitochondria? Now, speaking in the world of NAD, this is not the purpose of this video, but it's a relevant place to mention it. NAD, we can supplement precursors for, like NR or NMN. I put a link down below for Verso, which is a nicotinamide mononucleotide. It is a precursor to NAD. So it can potentially help support and activate those sirtuins that you probably hear Dr. David Sinclair talk about all the time and reinforce the mitochondria that way. That's a supplemental way to do it. They have a product that's called Cell Being that has a couple other different compounds, but NMN is one of them where it's really comprehensive formula with this. So I put a link down below for a special discount for a 15% off discount link for Verso. I definitely recommend in the world of potential like cell support supplements, Verso is one of the few that is really doing it right by targeting what I think are really interesting pathways and powerful pathways. So that link down below is for Verso's NMN or Cell Being. They also have a product called Clean Being, which helps support autophagy and sort of the recycling and cleaning mechanisms of the cells, which is a different discussion. So again, that link down below, 15% off. It's right beneath this video in the top line of the description. Sincerely recommend it. You can notice it really quick. Definitely notice it within a couple of weeks. Definitely notice it within a few months if you're someone that's really in tune with your body. At least I did. So that link down below. Coming back to the mitochondria here, then I'm going to give you sort of a playbook that you can follow. Proteostasis is protein turnover. And in the mitochondria, the mitochondria turns over protein really, really fast. Remember, it's a, it's a hot motor. It's just got a lot going on. When you have a failure to sort of repair or improper proteostasis, who takes the hit the most? the mitochondria. Like protein turnover is happening in cells all over the place in our entire body. But again, because the mitochondria has such a fast rate of turnover, its risk of mutation is significantly higher. So again, poor mitochondria takes the hit. Let's flash forward over to telomeres for a second, because telomeres, again, a category people know. If you don't know, think of them like the caps on your shoelaces that protect your shoelaces from ever getting totally worn down. The shorter that that plastic cap gets, the more frayed your shoelace gets, and the higher the risk of genomic instability, okay? Now, one thing that we've seen is that when a telomere starts to shorten, you have an increase in something called P53. And this P53 stands in the way of something called PGC1A. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, here I go with all these letters and stuff, right? What that means in short, PGC1A reinforces the mitochondria and increases mitochondrial biogenesis so that new mitochondria can form properly. If P53 comes as a result of shortened telomeres, then what's gonna happen? Well, you're going to impede PGC1A, which is going to make your mitochondria weaker and dysfunctional. And then what happens? You know what dysfunctional mitochondria do? Because we keep hearing this. It doesn't just mean you have less energy. That's a side effect. But as a result, they become like a dysfunctional motor that instead of harnessing the energy to drive the car, it just explodes and creates a bunch of toxic stuff. Like it just creates a bunch of waste, a bunch more reactive oxygen species. Okay, not the end of the world, our body can deal with it. Not as we get older. This is where reactive oxygen species and oxidative stress come into play again. It's a sliver of this entire pie, but it's an important sliver. Because when oxidative stress increases, what does that do? Shortens telomeres more. So then you have shorter telomeres, more P53. Then you have less PGC1A and more dysfunctional mitochondria and more ROS and even shorter telomeres. And then it becomes exponentially increased. That's why when people start to age, all of a sudden they, suddenly they aggressively age, right? Anyhow, moving on, how do we put it together? Remember, the mitochondria certainly doesn't start it, but it sure as hell finishes it. And one of the best ways, if we look at literature, is exercise. Now I'm gonna talk about other things too, but exercise is the best possible way that we know to date to reinforce and protect your mitochondria. Think of it like this. We can try all the time to go and solve every little country's problems in the world. The world is on fire, Latvia is on fire, Lithuania is on fire, there's boogeymen in Australia, and we just wanna go help, right? I'm speaking, let's say we're America, right? We just wanna go help. Or we wanna do whatever. Well, that's not gonna necessarily fix all the problems because we just can't do that. But if the world starts to go south, wouldn't our resources be really, really well spent just being put into like national security and just being like, let's build a force field around us and protect us if things start to go real bad. That's kind of what we can do with mitochondria. It's like, we can go try to address these fires with senolytics, with NAD, with this and that. But if we're not taking care of our mitochondria, we're not doing anything. We're not taking care of our home turf and protecting ourselves. There was a study that was published in Nature Aging that found that elderly people that exercised had significantly higher levels of NAD and consequently were able to activate more sirtuins and consequently had better, healthier mitochondria more than likely. Just active, right? Activity is the best thing we can do and being sedentary is quite literally the worst thing that we could do. Probably even more so than nutrition, honestly because the act of moving and exercising is actively changing and reinforcing and strengthening our mitochondria. Whereas nutrition certainly plays a role, but you can offset a little bit of a bad diet with good amount of exercise, not entirely. Obviously, both of them being really good. Exercise has also been demonstrated to keep telomeres longer. The longer the telomeres, well, the less the risk of genome instability, the less mutation, the less PARP1, the less PGC1A blocking, and ultimately the stronger the mitochondria. So both directly and indirectly exercise is reinforcing the mitochondria. Not to mention when we exercise, we have higher endogenous antioxidants that are protecting us in specific categories. Remember, too much of that is not a good thing either. So what is a playbook that you can do? Periodic fasting to induce stress in your body. If I had to choose one, I would probably say doing a 24 hour fast once a week or something is plenty. Or if you'd rather do it a little bit more systemically like, or like as a, like a systemic fashion, like you wanna create a plan for yourself, I would say maybe do two or three days of 18 hour fasts per week. That's pretty effective when it comes down to NAD. Proper endogenous antioxidant support by exercising and creating more of these antioxidants that you can. Occasional cold exposure to increase that hormetic stress so you produce more endogenous antioxidants, but no more than like two or three days a week. Sauna utilization for more of that hormetic stress, once again. Proper supplementation. Yes, occasionally taking antioxidants and occasionally making sure that you're buffering some of the stress is hugely advantageous. 
high intensity interval training, increasing your VO2 max. There are strong correlations with VO2 max and mitochondrial health. The higher your VO2 max, more than likely, the better your mitochondrial health. To a certain degree, if you push it too hard, you can damage yourself too. The best strategy for VO2 max is going to be doing interval training in like a range of three to five minute chunks, doing three to five minute intervals, four or five of those in one setting. So like anywhere from three to five, three to five minute intervals. So three to five X, three to five intervals. And do that a few times per week highly, highly effective when it comes to increasing VO2 max, which is the largest predictive indicator we have for longevity to date. As far as the timing of your exercise, I am a fan of doing my exercise in a fasted state because once again, you're activating all these different pathways that may or may not be good for longevity. Some of it is speculative. Modulating your carbohydrate intake to your activity. If you're not active, reduce the carbohydrate intake. If you're active, increase the carbohydrate intake. And I know when we look at a thermic effect and we look at all this stuff, thermogenesis, that carbohydrates don't matter and calories matter, I understand that. But if we're talking about mitochondrial health, if you are loading down the carbohydrates and not utilizing them, that is damaging for the mitochondria. One of the best ways that we can strengthen the mitochondria is by doing things like restricting carbohydrate intake now and then, by doing occasional fasting, by exercising, all things which induce mitochondrial biogenesis by increasing PGC1A. So the playbook is cold exposure, heat exposure, fasted training, interval training, resistance training, and putting it all together with proper clean supplementation. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.